Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to film a video with the new Colored Rain Power Palette. I haven't seen a new palette from Colored Rain in quite some time, so I got really excited because this is one of my favorite indie makeup formulas. So I thought I would start off by swatching the palette for you guys quick. I haven't even swatched this palette yet, so why not swatch it and see what these shades are all about? I did use this palette once um, and I did enjoy it. So let me tell you the shades quick. So the purple is the truth, legacy, respect, snitch, and then revenge is like a beautiful duo chrome, multi-chrome shade. It has a beautiful golden green red flip to it and then the next four shades are right here we have deception alibi betrayal testify so when i heard that colored rain was collabing with the show power i really didn't know what to expect but i don't think this is what i was expecting this is very much a fall themed burgundy purple kind of color story and I don't hate it, I really, really don't, but I'm not really sold on it yet either. So when I first saw it, I definitely thought it gave me like a Queen of Hearts vibe, and so I was very, very hesitant to pick it up, but I did. So yeah, I just thought it would be fun to play with it, um, especially if you guys have been like waiting on me to film a video. Um, here it is, and then this flips backward, which is nice, and there's a nice mirror on here. It says it's cruelty-free, 12-month shelf life, made in the USA. Net weight is 12.5 grams, 12.5 grams, 0 0.44 ounces times 9. So, yeah, and then all the product information is on the back here. So I'm like going through brushes because I hoard brushes as well. Here's a brand new Sigma brush that I've apparently never used that's gathering dust. And it's beautiful. It's like a tapered blending brush. It's called a small tapered blending E45. And I want to go into the shade. Actually, I kind of want a fluffy blending brush first. Maybe I'll try this one. This is by Morphe. Pink packaging, never seen that before. Yeah, I just have some brand new brushes that I just keep and don't use. So I just want to place the shade Deception, which is like the lightest shade in the palette in my crease, just to kind of get me started. And usually the color payoff on colored rain palettes is really, 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 really good. So that's why I like jumped at the opportunity to own a new palette from them because I feel like they haven't done anything new in a while and um, yeah it's just nice to see them come out with something new I know they like makeup geek are now sold at Target stores which I think is such a great achievement for this brand and so you know being at Target is not an easy thing and they've been you know, bringing their products, like those little mini palettes they came out with a while ago, to Target, and they've been doing some price point adjustments and things like that. Um, so I'm sure it's taken them a lot of time to do stuff like that and to now refocus on a collab this big. Obviously, is not an easy feat. So I like that shade. It's very pigmented, as you can see. Now I really want to play with Betrayal, which is like a pretty raspberry shade. And now I'm going to use that Sigma brush and kind of put that on the lid as well as into the crease. I want to see if we can use it to deepen up the crease and make a more interesting color. So we have an interesting situation going on um, right now. Actually, not me personally, but my friend, I've been talking to you guys about this, is getting married soon. Her, It's actually her wedding month now that we're in September. And 
So she bought this very expensive, very beautiful wedding dress from a wedding store in um, Minnesota. And she was very excited about her dress. She showed me pictures. I was excited for her. la di da di da And come to find out this weekend, she still hasn't gotten her dress yet. And apparently the owner of the shop keeps telling her, pause. Okay, I'm going to go into Stitch now and just do the same thing that I was doing with Betrayal. Um, just kind of using it to deepen up the crease. So yeah, the owner of the wedding dress store keeps telling her her dress has been ordered, it's on its way, la di da di da like kind of stringing her along. And the most recent update she had from the store owner is that the dress is being held in Canadian Customs because apparently the designer um, is a Canadian designer. So my friend, she's really laid back, like not a bridezilla at all, like just really, really laid back. Her parents paid for the dress and you know they've been trying to talk to the designer or not the designer but the store owner um to find out where the dress is etc etc and they've been like nothing but patient with this lady and um have been trying to get this dress that they have paid in full for you know what i mean so when she told us that she still didn't have her dress like last week when we saw her for drinks um, my f really, really good friend, her mom is a seamstress and does wedding dress alterations. And so it kind of triggered like a little alarm in her bell um, that a wedding dress, typically you should have it. Most people have it a couple of months before their wedding. Um, of course, if it's like, you know, a last minute order, it may be closer to your wedding, but she ordered her dress in January. Okay, now I'm going to go into testify to really deepen up the outer corner. So, you know, everyone expected the dress to be here in time for alterations. Also, my friend decided to have her bachelorette party very close to her actual wedding. So we'll be out of town this upcoming weekend for her bachelorette party. And then she's got a couple of days before she leaves town again for her wedding, which is a destination wedding. So she's really on a time crunch. So finally this weekend we all met up and we were talking about her dress again and how her parents had met with the boutique owner and how, you know, the lady had said the dress should be here on this coming Tuesday and like that her dad was like scaring the boutique owner, which I've met her parents multiple times. Her parents actually came to our wedding. That's how good of a friend this is. And they're like the nicest people I've ever met. Like some of the nicest, nicest Minnesotans. Oh gosh, I didn't realize what a mess I was making. On my arm! Okay, so anyway. Her parents are legitly like some of the nicest people. She's the nicest person. Her fiance is an amazing guy. Like they're super nice people. So, and anyway, this dress is really expensive by the way. So... Um, she was like telling them, oh, you're scaring me, blah, 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 don't worry, the dress will be here, the dress will be here, which is what she has been telling them this whole time. So then, you know, most of our friends are married, she's like one of the last friends to get married, and when she told the story again to a different friend, um, she was kind of had like some spare time and was doing research and reading reviews about this particular bridal store in Minnesota. And one of the brides had left a tip saying a similar situation happened to her. What ended up working was she tried to contact other bridal stores that sold that same designer. So for example, like my wedding dress I bought was from a designer named Waters. And so basically find somebody else that sells that same brand, a different bridal store and call them and see if they have a bridal, like a rep from the brand that they can she can then contact to see about where her dress is, like if the designer can do something from her end. Okay, so from swatches, I think I really want to try revenge on my lid. Um, so I'm going to do that while I'm telling the rest of the story. So that was a good tip. We thought it was a great idea. So we went on her dress designer's website, found another store. So there's a bridal shop or like boutique in Chicago that sells that same 
dress designer. Her dress is designed by a designer named Ravini. I've never heard of the brand, but I'm sure, you know, if you some of you are brides or, you know, your bridal shop consultants or you're in the wedding industry, you might have heard of them. I don't know. Anyway, so we found a shop in Chicago that sells the brand. We called the shop. We said, hey, she told them, hey, like, this is weird, but I had a little tip that I should call a different store and see if they've ever had trouble with the designer like this lady is saying because she's like really trashing the designer's name and the bridal shop consultant from Chicago said no we've never had a problem with Ravini getting stuff to us on time if I were you I would you know tell your parents to dispute their credit card charge that they used to pay for the dress right now. I mean, they basically, in the nicest way possible, told her that it sounds like this lady, the boutique store in Minnesota was scamming her. And that's kind of what it sounded like to all us friends who had all been in weddings or brides previously because you definitely get your dress sooner than a couple of weeks before your wedding if you ordered it in January. And we've had a store in Fargo a few years ago that was in a financial situation and basically they took money from brides for dresses that never got delivered and then the store closed and there were so many brides in the area that didn't have wedding dresses. So when she told us she didn't have her dress, that's like the first thing most of us thought about. Um, but of course you don't want to like scare your friend and make them feel bad about something, you know, that's an integral part of any bride's wedding day is their dress and she's the oldest daughter and the first one to get married and her parents spent like thousands of dollars on this dress. So that was a really bad sign when the bridal store in Chicago told her you know, we advise that you cancel the car charge because it sounds like you're being scammed. Okay, so I really like this shade. It's super beautiful. I think I'm going to pair it with a red eyeliner. This is the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Venus. So after we talked to the bridal shop in Chicago, um, my friend was super worried and we, I told her, you know, maybe it's a good idea for you to see what other bridal shops have to offer in the area where we live as far as like a second option or like a backup option just in case this lady is lying to you and doesn't come through with this dress she's promised you. And so we did, we called the bridal store that I actually got my wedding dress from and my friend said, hey, my name is, sorry, my camera battery died so where was I? Okay, so my friend called the bridal store in Fargo that I bought my wedding dress from. So obviously like, you know, we can like maybe trust them a little bit more because they've been in business for a while. That's good, <laughs> right? I mean, even though really who knows, you know, we could be getting scammed any second here. So um, she calls the store in Fargo. Now I'm gonna put Betrayal um, in my lower lash line just to smoke it out. So she calls the store in Fargo that I got my dress from and they tell her, oh yeah, we've had a lot of brides from who bought dresses from that store come to us looking for options because they're getting close to their wedding dates and they're worried and we're like, alarms are going off. All kinds of alarms are going off in my brain of like, oh my God, this poor girl, like her family paid all this money and put down money for this dress and like holy crap you know and her wedding is so close like it's terrible to have that happen to a friend and so yeah basically she booked an appointment now um with this new place um just to see like what options she might have so the store in minnesota has still promised the dress will be here in time, not to worry kind of thing, which I honestly feel like is definitely like false hope. And I feel like, you know, I get it. Like this lady is probably like backed into a corner, her finances, she's probably running some kind of like scheme. Is it called a Ponzi scheme where you take money from something, put it towards 
So she probably took my friend's money to buy the dresses from, you know, a few months ago that she couldn't order because of whatever financial situation she had going on at that time. And so she's basically, you know, using that money as a, towards her next bride's dress. And I'm guessing the well's now dried up and she doesn't have the money that my friend's parents put towards her dress and now she has no way to deliver the actual dress. I think that's truly what's happening and this lady can't admit it so she keeps giving them false hope but if my friend keeps believing it all that's going to happen is her wedding day is going to come and she won't have a dress. So I'm hoping because we're actually going to her, I'm going to her appointment right now after I'm done filming this. I'm hoping we find her a a backup dress and that everything's okay instead of like her relying on this dress that apparently is being held up in customs. So I'm gonna put on, uh, this is Pasadena by Ofra from Samantha March's collab with Ofra. These are such comfortable li liquid lipsticks. Which I'd like always heard that they were really comfortable but you know it's like everyone always says every liquid lipstick formula they try is comfortable but these this actually really really truly is okay so I'm gonna spray my face so yeah I'm really really hoping that this isn't the scam we think it is but we're pretty convinced right now just based off of how things have progressed or for the lack of progress that they took her money and she'll probably never get a wedding dress from that lady but you know I guess you know there's still a few days for her to prove us wrong but it's like how can she keep you know she can't be in denial about it and not do anything because otherwise what's gonna happen is she's gonna run out of time and it's gonna be time for her to get on a plane to her wedding without a dress like and I'm assuming this is going to be a pretty nice fancy wedding, you know, for, you know, what I've been to. It's going to be like my first destination wedding ever. And so it's going to be a nice wedding and she can't just, you know, walk down the aisle in like something, just any dress. You know what I mean? Like it's at a really nice... Um, resort etc etc so there's a lot of pressure I'm assuming when you put in thousands of dollars to a dress and um, she just had such a good experience at the store and she said it was just her and her mom and she and her mom just like bawled because it felt so good and so special which is everything it should be but then you get scammed like that. I just feel so terrible for her. So fingers crossed that we find a dress or the dress shows up or whatever happens. I will definitely keep you guys updated on how it all turns out. So I just wanted to tell that story because I don't usually have like things like this happen. And it's a good lesson too for, you know, people my age and you guys because a lot of you I'm assuming are like in that age where you're getting married or you have friends getting married and it really I was telling real too I was like you know it's funny because I didn't do any research about the place I bought my dress from it was in Fargo so I assumed it was a good place I actually ended up walking out with my dress I tried it on I walked away because it was more than what I wanted to pay for a dress. Um, but my dress was a sample, so even though it was a designer dress, I got a really good deal on it. My dress was originally, I think, over $3,000, and I got it for sixteen, dollars which is still more than I would have ever wanted or anticipated paying for a dress. But that's, you know, between you and God, because... Um, I felt so beautiful in my dress. I felt exactly how I should have felt in my wedding dress. And I had tried on other dresses and I just knew when I put this one on that it was special. So yeah, it's crazy that, you know, you just trust people and something important like this, your wedding day, you could still get screwed um, no matter how much money you put towards it. Um, 
So yeah, just thought it would be an interesting story to share with you guys. I'd love to hear if you guys have experienced anything similar. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments or if you have any helpful tips and tricks you guys think that would help my friend. I would love to know from you guys. And as far as the palette goes, um, I really like this eye look. It's very dramatic for like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but you know what? That's okay. I um, will rock it like a champion. Um, I do really like these shimmer shades I played with. This one has a really beautiful like ultraviolet purple um, and I tucked that into my inner corner legacy right here. It looks white but it has a huge um, purple shift to it. This shade has a beautiful duo chrome effect so that's the one I put on my eye. Um, this isn't like the most versatile palette like I wouldn't say like oh this is like the go-to neutral palette no this is definitely for somebody that either likes the show or likes the tones those like burgundy wine purple shades and I like it, but I think even though I love colored braids so much, I don't think that this would be a palette that I get tons and tons of use from. Um, just because of how specific of a color scheme this is, I don't see myself looking for this particular palette in my collection. So those are some things you want to keep in mind. Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts on the Colored Rain Power Collab. Let me know if you picked up anything from this collection down below as well. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!